Hello everyone, welcome to Franklin Park Zoo. My name's Nicole, I'm a zookeeper here in the Hooves and Horns Department. And today we are celebrating Cory Buster Day. And we are with two Cory Busters here on exhibit. We have Magoo who's right here waiting patiently to start her training session. She is 17 years old. And we have Kabibi over here on the right and she is three years old. So. Oh, she's coming over right when she heard her name. We love that. So what I'm going to do, their sessions out on exhibit are very brief, but I'll give you kind of a glimpse of what they look like. So I have their nation, uh, their stations here, which are essentially like their name tags. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang them up over here. So Magoo is going to go to the yellow one, ideally, and Kabibi is going to stand in front of the black one. And this is important so that if we ever had to medicate them or anything, we can properly separate them and feed them some food. Kabibi just pecked her, so I'm going to say good, and I'm going to give her a piece of mouse. Magoo wants to go steal it, and I'm going to bring Magoo over here in front of her station. Magoo, here she comes. Station, good. There we go, that's perfect. And today on the menu we have some mice. <laughs> we have a very excited Magoo here. There we go, perfect. And I cut the mice up really small just so we can make the session a little bit longer. So I'm gonna try taking a step away and see if Magoo stays where she is. No, nope, not quite. I'm gonna feed Kabibi here. So it's entering breeding season right now for, good job Magoo. It's entering breeding season right now, uh, which means that Magoo is very interested in interacting with her keepers, interacting with the other birds. She gets very excited during this time, and that's kind of why she's following me a little bit and walking away from her station. So Kabibi is just entering that age where she's gonna go into maybe a breeding season, maybe in the next year or two, she'll lay an egg. Uh, usually they reach sexual maturity around three years old. Now she's staying by her station really well. So uh, in total, I'm feeding them about three mice this morning. Obviously they're chowing down, they're super excited. Mice are probably their favorite part of their everyday diet. Good job guys, and that was it. I fed it all up already, all done. So I'm gonna take their stations down. So every day they're gonna get their mice, which is what I just fed them this morning. They have a little bit more, so when they come inside, they get a good treat. And then we also feed them some ground meat and also a grain just to make sure that they're getting their whole diet and they're nice and healthy. They also get some produce. So a couple times a week, they're gonna get grapes, which are their favorite. I love to toss them on exhibit and they'll forage around and look for them. I know, we're all done. We'll throw you some grapes later maybe. We also can give them some green beans uh, and also some banana. And then for fun, you know, as a little snack here and there, we'll also give them peanut butter, super worms, mealworms, and also hard boiled egg. They really love those things. So I like to save those for special training sessions. So out on exhibit, we're a little limited with this fence here. I can't necessarily stick my hands through or put a scale under there. Um, so we'll work on maybe maintaining a uh, stepping on the scale inside. We'll also work on maybe being able to do some tactile stuff with them, like touch their wings, lift their wings, look at their feathers. Um, so usually we'll work on those complex behaviors and use some more tasty snacks inside. And we'll also use those for enrichment or foraging activities, which they seem to enjoy as well. I love how they're right up close here checking you guys out. <laughs> So these guys are actually the heaviest flighted bird species around. So um, the males are usually twice as large as the females. So these ladies, Magoo is around 18 pounds, Kabibi's around 14 pounds, and a male would be twice the size of that. Uh, so it's very impressive to see them fly. They wouldn't normally fly. Because they're so heavy, it takes a lot of energy. So they'd prefer to be walking around the grasslands. They'll forage for food that way. They don't migrate just because it takes so much energy. They're only gonna fly if they feel threatened. So they're walking around this exhibit here. They feel nice and relaxed. Uh, and that's a good sign to us that they're, you know, happy and healthy. So <laughs> on that note, actually, Ashley was wondering, uh, commenting on their size and asking how much they weigh. 
Yeah, so as I said, Magoo is around 18 pounds and Kabibi is around 16 pounds, which is about normal. Um, naturally, they'd be around 15 kgs, which I think is a little bit um, lighter than that. So these girls are enjoying their everyday meals, I'd say. And Deborah asked where they originate from. Okay, so they are from Africa. So there's two different kind of populations of these guys. There's one that's found in the northeastern part and there's one population found in the most, you know, southern part. Um, they're found in open area grasslands. Maybe there's a couple trees here and there that they can find shade in during the day. Um, but uh, they're kind of separating those two populations because there's, you know, a wooded area in Central Africa. Um, and they're not necessarily going to be found in the forest. Um, they'll be looking for insects. You can also find them a lot walking alongside maybe zebras and wildebeest. They kind of hang out there because as, is, as those herd animals are walking around, they're disturbing all the insects in the grass. And then these guys can snatch those insects up and eat them. Um, so it's kind of beneficial to walk alongside them. And they actually have a mutualistic relationship with a species of bird called bee eaters. So the bee eaters actually hang out on the cory bustard's back as they walk around and stir up those insects. And the bee eaters will go ahead and eat the bugs. And then also they're much more quick to fly off if they you know, see a predator or something and they can help alert the cory bustards to any threats nearby. And what are their predators? So jackals, jaguars, lions, most species of birds can't get these guys, but there is a species of eagle there um, that can prey on them. Ashley was wondering if they are endangered. They are not endangered. So as of 2016 though, um, they were reclassified. So they used to be least concerned for a long time, um, but now they're considered near threatened. And that's mostly because of you know human activity. We're kind of encroaching in their space a little bit with both farming, um, these guys also, their feathers are so, so unique. I love their neck feathers. They have those, it's like black and white stripes. They're super fluffy and they actually make great flock. Maybe going to come peck the phone there <laughs> and now they're going to argue. <laughs> I love that. Uh, so, but those feathers actually work really well for fly fishing and a lot of um, Americans actually, um, their fly fishing lures are made from their feathers. So we actually coordinate with um, a program where we collect the feathers that these guys molt naturally every year or they let go. Um, just like we lose hair naturally, these guys are going to lose feathers and we can collect them and send them off um, so that um, these guys won't be poached unnecessarily for their feathers. Those are all great questions. I'm loving it. Yeah, and Bailey, age six, asks if they mate like penguins forever. Oh, that's a good question, Bailey. They do not mate like penguins forever. Uh, the males will go through their breeding season and they'll mate with multiple females. They kind of do this really impressive display. So the females can kind of do a little bit too. They can kind of pop up their neck feathers, but the male feathers, um, well, their neck, their esophagus can actually span like four times its normal size and they make this big loud booming noise and they'll kind of drag their wings on the ground and they'll put their tail feathers up really high and it will showcase this beautiful white feathers underneath and that will attract a female and he'll kind of protect his territory. Females will check out the different males hanging out um, and protecting their own territories and kind of choose the males that they want to breed with. Uh, and then once the male breeds with one female, he is going to be off to the next. And Liz was wondering what is the best part of your job or your day here at the zoo? Oh, that's a good question. I love these kind of questions. My favorite part is the training. I like that to work with the bird and see that we're kind of developing a communication or a language between us. I also love talking to guests and um, about you know, the animals that I love and how we can take care of them. Um, those are all my favorite parts. Basically everything, especially on a day like today where we're outside, the weather is so nice. Uh, it just makes everything perfect. And Deborah was wondering, how did the zoo obtain them and why? How did the zoo obtain them? So I can't exactly remember where Magoo came from. She came as an egg, I believe. Uh, and then Kabibi was bred between two birds at the Dallas Zoo um, and we obtained a chick from the Dallas Zoo 
Um, she was about a year when she came here. So these guys are part of, we have a species survival plan for them um, through AZA institutions and we try to keep populations robust there so that we have a good healthy population of birds and that's kind of our goal. We don't have a male right now but we do hope in the future to acquire a male. I think we're on a list to get an egg one day and then we can have some baby cory busters. So that's something to look out for in probably the distant future. <laughs> Take one or two more. So sure. Kayla was asking, how do you tell Magoo and Kabibi apart? Oh, okay, so Kabibi stands a little bit taller. I also like to look at their eyes. So um, Kabibi's eyes are, her pupils are a little larger than Magoo's, and that's kind of um, two ways to tell them apart. Uh, Kabibi also has a band on her right leg. I don't think Magoo does. Okay, and the last one from Deborah, do they nest on the ground? That's a good question, they do nest on the ground. So if you guys look at their feet, um, they don't have any toes in the back, so they don't really make for good perching birds. They're gonna spend most of their time on the ground. So they kind of dig out in the dirt a little shallow spot, maybe protected by like a tuft of grass um, in the grasslands. And um, they're just gonna make their nest right in the ground there, just a little, a little hole a female will dig two eggs and then she'll um, she'll lay two eggs and sit on them and incubate them for about 26 days before they hatch. And their eggs, uh, their chicks actually when they hatch are precocial which means they can get up, move around um, and they can't necessarily take care of themselves. Mom is still gonna hang out with them for about a year but at least they can you know have that defense of being able to move around and whatnot. Super cute. I think that's all the time we have. Is there anything else you want to say before we sign off? Well, definitely come down, visit the Cory Busters. They're a great species of birds. Not a lot of people know about them. Uh, and I hope you guys have an awesome day. Thank you.